Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we just all stand up? Okay, good. Okay, sit down again. <laughs> okay, stand up. <laughs> good, I'm glad you're awake this morning. <laughs> it's just, it's, I just felt we've we got to be responsive to, to the Word of God. Um, and so I, I felt I just want you to stand up and sit down. Stand up. <laughs> okay, so let's pray. Father, Lord, we want to engage your Word this morning. Lord, we don't want to just be hearers this morning. But Father, we want to engage your word and, 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 and the purpose, Lord, of this year. Father, we want to be partakers of it. Uh, we want to take hold, Lord, of, of, of the promises for this year. Father, our hope is in you. Lord, our eyes are set on you. And so, Father, we ask today that you will give us manna. Lord, you will feed us. You will sustain us, Lord, for the journey of this year. In Jesus' name. So, Father, as we look at your word today, we pray that you would do something on the inside of us. Uh, Father, not just something that we're going to hear, but, Father, something that's going to change us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gosh, I hope the, the word is going to meet the expectation. Good expectation. Amen. Um, so I want to bring a simple word this morning uh, for this year. There, there have been many prophecies for this year that you, can, that you hear around. And even in our prayer meetings, there's been a lot of prophecy, a lot of promises for this year. God's been saying quite a lot. But what I want to do is I want to highlight, I want to just draw out something uh, this morning for us to focus on um, something that the Lord has just been dropping on the inside of me. But how was 2011 for you? Hmm? Nice. 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 Well, you got married. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. They're still glowing. They're still on honeymoon. Honeymoon that's going to last for many decades. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a tough 2011, hasn't it? It's, it's been, what did you say, stormy? Transforming. Hmm. I thought I heard stormy. <laughs> but yeah, it has been a difficult year, and, 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 and I know a lot of people have gone through a hard time um, during 2011. But have you ever been in a place where you felt hopeless and despairing. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a place where you've just felt hopeless and despairing? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I have. Um, I felt it. Do you know, hopeless, to be hopeless and despairing is pain without purpose. It's just pain. You're just paining on the inside. And there's just no purpose to it. It's a torment that goes on on the inside of your mind um, that seems to be way out of proportion. And, it's, and it comes from the devil who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's his purpose. He is the author of all lies. Amen. He's the father of lies. He's the author of lies. If you've been in that place where you feel like you're suffering and you, and you can't breathe and, 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 and you can't see almost a way out, that hopeless place, it's rooted in a pack of lies. And he wants you to believe in the state that you are in. You see, the devil has no power over us except that which we give him. And so the only way he can be empowered in your life if you start to believe the lies that he throws you. And so what happens is he becomes the author of the lies in your life and you start to put your faith in those lies and 
faith produces. When I asked God this morning, for, uh, for, well, not this morning, but when I asked God for the word for this morning, um, I felt the Lord just drop in my spirit the, the, the phrase, redemptive purpose. And that hope is being restored. That this is a year of hope being restored. For you as a believer, there, there, there is a redemptive purpose in everything. For you as a believer. For the Lord will use all things for the good of those who love Him. There is a redemptive purpose for you as a believer in all things. As you come into that love covenant with the Lord, as you, as you engage and pursue the Lord... He will pursue you. See, I really believe that there, is a, that there is a need for us to pursue the Lord. There is a need for us, because he says he will use all things for the good of those who love him. Okay, it's not those who are just existing Christians. I believe that there needs to be a pursuit of love for those who love him, for those whose eyes are set upon him, for those who are engaging the Lord. He will turn circumstances around in your life and he'll use all things for the good of those who are in pursuit of him. Amen? The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of, of God is at hand. And we have been in a process of preparation for this very fact. You see, and if the enemy can get us overwhelmed in the process, then we start to lose sight of the purpose. Do you understand? Do you understand that? We are all in a process that the Lord is busy working in our lives. We are in, in, in this in this process, this preparation that's taking place. And in, if in that preparation process, you start to feel so overwhelmed with what is going on, you start to lose sight. And what happens is that's when the enemy... You see, the enemy knows that we are all going through a process. And we are all going through a preparation. So what he will do is he'll hijack the, the, the preparation process with his lies. So what he does is he makes that whole preparation process feel overwhelming. You start to lose sight of the purpose and you start to sink into a pit of despair. Now it's pain without purpose. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then we fall into that horrible dark place, that pit of despair. And it's a horrible place. Because it feels like you can't breathe. And you feel like you're just going nowhere. The truth is that you're in a process of preparation. Amen. You are in a process of preparation. And if you can understand that, then you are able to endure the process. The kingdom of God is at hand. And that's what we are being prepared for. There is going to be a shift this year. There is going to be this year a shift of an ushering in of the kingdom of God that we have not seen before, that the world hasn't seen before. There is, there is, there is coming a change in the world this year. The kingdom of God is going to invade the earth in an unprecedented measure this year. The, it's the, uh, the old is going to start forming, uh, falling away. And God is going to start ushering in the new this year. There is going to be a, such an outpouring of the kingdom of God this year. Do you know, um, I think it's, it's in... Um, Malachi, is it Malachi? Where it says that, um, that the, 
that there's going to come a clear distinction between those who serve God and those who don't. Malachi 3. Yeah. There's going to be a clear distinction between those who serve God and those who don't. Um, we are going to start to see the shifting of the grayness. Just that, that, muddy, that muddy water that we kind of like live in. That, that, that gray, there's going, to come, there's going to come clear distinctions. This is darkness. This is light. This is the kingdom of God. And this is the kingdom of the devil. And there's going to come, a, a, there, I believe, a distinction, an ushering in of the kingdom of God this year in an unprecedented way. <clears throat> so, what we need to do is we need, to ch- we need, to, uh, we need a mindset change. Um, that phrase, we need a paradigm shift. And in order for, for there to be a, a mindset change, we need to start changing what, how, the way we think. Now, so what I'm saying is there's a redemptive purpose this year. So when I say redemptive purpose, um, sometimes that word redemption can, can be quite an abstract word for many people. So let me just explain. Redemption means to recover after a payment has been made. To recover after a payment has been made. It's a restoration. That's redemption. There's a restoration to take place. There's a taking back. So let's say, for instance, you lose your house. You can't pay the payments on your house. But, but somehow you get the money and you are able to pay the, the, the mortgage. You get the house back. Okay, there's a redemption that takes place. You get back what you've paid for. All right, who has paid the price? Jesus. We are going to start to live in the redemptive purpose of the cross, of what Jesus has accomplished for us. Amen? There is a redemptive purpose that we are going to start taking hold of. Our inheritance of what Jesus has accomplished on the cross for us. He's paid the price. It's paid in full. And He has, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So this is a redemptive year. And so I want anybody who feels this morning like you have lost and, they, and, 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 and you feel like, like um, you've despaired over something that has been taken from you. I believe there is a redemptive purpose this year for those who love the Lord. Amen. Does that excite anybody? Amen. (laughs) It's hope. It's hope restored, isn't it? It's hope coming back to us. It's when Jesus starts to lift your head. It's when your eyes can open again. It's when you start to see color. It's when you start to feel, I can breathe. I can live because I've got hope. I can endure this day. I can endure this week. I can endure this month. I can endure this year because God is restoring hope. to John 14, 29, I think it says, I've told you these things now, so when they happen, you'll believe. Hallelujah. You see, the redemptive uh, purpose is normally always preceded by pain or sacrifice. Or a sense of loss. You sow in order to reap. Amen. You sow in order to reap. Um, Casting your bread upon the water, because after many days it will return to you. Investments. You invest in order to reap. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. What was the redemptive purpose of the cross? 
you and I. That was the joy that was set before Jesus when he was in that garden of Gethsemane, when he was sweating blood, when he was going to lose his place as a son, when he was calling out, my dearest, my, my one and only daddy, when he was going to lose his position as a son so that you could become a son, where he was going to lose all his inheritance so that you can gain full inheritance. That place that he was going through where he was sweating blood for the first time, separated from his one and only Father. For your sake. The joy that was set before him to endure that was you and I. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? This is a year of harvest. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody's happy. It's a year of harvest. We are going to see the harvest come in this year. Amen? Yeah. Ha. I was reading Rick Joyner's um, prophecy about this year, and he was saying little churches of like a hundred are going to start seeing a thousand and more start coming in. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a year of harvest. It's a year where we're going to see the kingdom of God just invade the place. <laughs> there is no ground or no territory too hard for the gospel to penetrate, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. So it's a year of the harvest. But, but anybody who has, uh, who has reaped anything knows that there has, has to be a preparation, a planting, hard work that goes in before you reap the harvest. And, and so there is, there is a, a redemptive purpose in sowing and in planting and in preparing the ground because it's going to bear much fruit. Amen. There is a redemptive purpose when God starts to prune your life because there's going to come much fruit from you. So I believe that we, we, are in a, we have been in a preparation process of God doing a lot of stuff in our lives so that we can be ready for the harvest that is coming. And it was interesting when I was reading that prophecy by Rick Joyner, he was saying the reason why the smaller churches, the smaller congregations are going to see a greater harvest come in is because normally within a smaller congregation, there is a lot of dealing with one another. Whereas in massive churches, you revolve around a lot of programs. But in smaller churches, there is... Iron sharpening iron like one man sharpens another, getting involved in one another's lives and stuff like that, working out what is a family, how do we survive as a family, how do we stick together as a family when all I want to do is I want to just say, I want to get out of here. I don't. I, I love this family. But I've been in that place when I just want to get out. But, you know, God is saying, no, you can't just, you can't just, uh, divorce your family. You got to stay there. You got to stay there and work it through. Amen. So, um, in Luke thirteen, verse six, there is the parable of the f of that um, fig tree in the vineyard. Uh, when I was reading it, I didn't have time to sort of like just wait on the Lord and think, well, why is there a fig tree in the vineyard? But um, anyway, the the master comes. <laughs> You, you were waiting for a revelation there. <laughs> the master comes and, um, and he says to the, to the worker of the vineyard, he says, this fig tree has not uh, borne any fruit, uh, cut it down. And, and the, the, the worker of the vineyard says, no, wait, let's give it a chance. Let's start to dig. I'm going to dig around this fig tree, and I'm going to fertilize it 
because for three years it bore no fruit. And let's see this year if it bears fruit. Let's see this year if it bears fruit. Let's put some work into it. Let's dig around the ground. Let it be in a place where it can start to receive and absorb when it rains. When God's Spirit comes, are you in a place where you can just receive and absorb? Are you in a place where you're just resting in the presence of God, just soaking in His presence, His Spirit? Fertilizing the fig tree. Now at the end of that parable, it's probably, I'm not sure why it was only in Luke, but the end of that parable, it doesn't say whether the tree bore fruit or not. And I thought, oh. But I found in Proverbs 27, 18, it says, He who tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. So there's the answer. So as I was saying earlier, we need a mindset change. In order for us to have that mindset change, we need to, we need to set our minds on something else. See, we are, triune, we are triune beings. We are made up of mind, body, and spirit. Amen? Mind, body, and spirit is what we are made up of. Now, the mind acts like the mediator of our life. And the mind makes the choice whether it's going to follow the flesh or follow the spirit. And so... What happens is when the mind starts to follow the flesh, you're so busy trying to save your life that you're going to end up losing your life. But the mind that is set on the Spirit is set on what the Spirit desires. And the Spirit of God wants to lead us into our inheritance. He wants to lead us into the fullness that He has for us. And so, and I had a dream. When was it? Um... Friday night. I had a dream Friday night. I'm not going to tell you what the dream was because it's a bit of a strange dream. But in the dream, the Lord says, the Lord says to me that yes and no is learned through obedience. And then he says, and change comes by surrender in the dream. So you can write that down. You can meditate on it. See what else it brings to you. But yes, there's a, there's a place where we, where we can move in, this, in, in our flesh, in our own understanding. But there's, there's a place where I start, to, I, I start to learn what is right and what is wrong through obedience. I believe this is a year of obedience. That we've got, we got to start being obedient to the Spirit's leading in our life. So the mind needs to now start choosing which route it's going to go as the mediator. Because as we are obedient, we're going to learn the, the right choices to make. And change is going to start coming in our lives as we surrender to the Lord and to His ways. So it's now time to get engaged more than ever in the kingdom of God. More than ever, it's time for us to Pursue the kingdom of God because a turnaround is coming. Amen? A turnaround is coming. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6. That is the ultimate redemption. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And out of that pit of darkness is to take our eyes off the author of lies and to set our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What is faith? Be believing, uh, uh, sure of that which is hopeful. So that we can endure the race that has been marked out for us. Do you know, it's it's Jesus is our only hope. Jesus is our only hope. Our eyes need to be set on Jesus. Jesus 
Jesus, Jesus. Start setting your eyes on Jesus. If you are in a pit, set your eyes on Jesus. If you are despairing, set your eyes on Jesus. Uh, while I was worshiping this morning, I saw like this, this, this storm and somebody was hanging on a pole while everything in that storm was trying to rip him loose. Set your eyes on Jesus. Take hold of Jesus. Hang on to him. Amen. It's set your eyes on Jesus. He is the author, the captain, the leader, and perfecter of your faith. It's for us to become single-minded. Start reducing your options. We ought to have no more options. Just start reducing the options around you so that you can become single-minded this year. Jesus, Jesus, set my eyes on Jesus. Psalm 123 says, Our eyes are set on you until you show us mercy. The only way to endure is to set your eyes on Jesus. Persist, persevere, set your eyes on Jesus until he comes through for you. Because he is coming through for you. 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 This is a year of redemption. He is coming through for you this year. Matthew 6 and verse 22. I'll finish with this. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if the eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Amazing scripture. And that word full of light from the Greek is to be transparent, bright, to shine, to make manifest like rays of light. Let's finish there. Father, we pray, Lord, that inside of us now you will just let your spirit take this word and let it live. Lord, I pray that you would be the lifter of our heads here this morning. And that, Lord, that we will no longer look at the pit or the overwhelming circumstances, but we will now start to change our focus to you, Jesus. Lord, we've set our eyes on you. You are the perfecter of our faith. We wait for you until the breakthrough in Jesus name and we praise you today that you are the God of breakthrough we praise you today that you are bringing down every obstacle everything that is in the way of our promise our destiny and purpose We thank you, Father, that hope is just rising up on the inside of us today. In Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you for 2012. We want to thank you for this year. Because, Father, it's a turnaround year. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.